Hey guys, Frank Rich here coming at you from the Critical Bench Compound in Tampa, Florida. Author and fitness creator of Mastetic Muscle. Um, and in this video, we wanna go over building muscle and losing fat. But more or less, I wanna to talk to you about building lean mass. I think we've all been, if we've been in the, the muscle building world or fitness space for a long period of time, we've been told that in order to build muscle, we have to go through what would be considered an excessive bulking cycle where we're gonna put on a little bit of muscle in a lot of body fat. And our end result is gonna be revealing a lean aesthetic physique. And I wanna kind of unveil to you some of the negative side effects of putting on too much fat and why you want to avoid that and how you can effectively build a lean physique by adding just pounds of muscle in minimal, if not any body fat, at all. First of all, why do we want to avoid putting on excessive amounts of fat? Well, there's going to be some negative effects that come within your body, hormonally, physiolog uh, physiologically, reasons why you want to avoid that. The first one is um, a principle or concept known as fat cell hyperplasia. And what this is, if we think about a fat cell and we look at it as a Ziploc bag or as a bucket, we can only store so much fat inside of our current fat cells. So once we reach the limit of what that cell can hold, our body has to create a new place to store new fat cells. So what hyperplasia is, is actually the creation of new fat cells. So if we have one fat cell that gets too full or gets too overloaded, we need to create a, a new place to store that fat, so our body's gonna create a second fat cell. Now we have two fat cells, and obviously there's, there's thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of fat cells within our body, but just using small numbers here. So if we think of hyperplasia, now we have two fat cells. So if we continue down this path for, let's say, three months or a six-month bulk, what's gonna happen is we're gonna continue to produce new fat cells. Now, when it comes time for us to go through our cutting phase or to our you know, shredding phase and, and we're gonna end up with that, that lean physique in another three to six months, we can only make those fat cells smaller. We can't get rid of them. We can't delete current fat cells. So basically what you've done is you've multiplied or doubled the amount of fat cells in your body, making it much harder for you to lose body fat, but also at the same time, because your body has more cells, fat cells in it, it's gonna wanna, it's gonna wanna fill those. So you basically make your body more adapt and more efficient at becoming fat. So reason number one why you want to avoid excessive bulking and putting on fat is because you want to avoid fat cell hyperplasia. Secondly, we talked about this a little bit earlier before, is the effects that it has on your hormones. We know testosterone is the male hormone and it's one of the most anabolic hormones and it's crucial in building muscle mass and losing fat. So. Estrogen, in, in the contrary, is the female hormone. So as your body fat raises, your, your estrogen levels are gonna increase as well. So another reason why you want to avoid putting on excessive amounts of fat is just to keep your hormone levels at optimal, optimal levels for being a man. So higher testosterone levels is gonna, it's gonna increase energy, it's gonna increase muscle mass, it's gonna increase performance, it's gonna increase sexual drive, um, all the things that make us want, or make us men and make us enjoy the life that we have. So those are two big reasons why we want to avoid um, going down the route or going down the path of doing excessive bulkings. And if really we think about why we've been told this and, and why this information has been passed on to us for decades through these magazines and experts and fitness coaches, reality, we see these bodybuilders, we see these guys that have these amazing physiques on stage and, and on TV and, and, and in the magazines. And these guys are, are loaded on drugs, loaded on anabolic steroids. It's easier for them to to go through these phases because they're gonna have things that are gonna allow them to make that shredding or make that leaning out much more easier. Um, and another reason why, what I truly believe is it's just a lack of um, discipline and just pure laziness. We, we look to do these excessive bulkings, especially through the winter holidays or through the winter months um, as an excuse to eat junk food. Um, if we just change our mindset a little bit and had a little bit more discipline 
in what we were doing with our life. We wouldn't have to go and we wouldn't allow ourselves. I'm not saying don't enjoy the foods that you love eating because obviously that's a big part of just living a happy life, but don't let it get out of control. Don't use bulking, don't use building muscle as a reason to let yourself go. Um, and, and really, you know, those foods, they're, they're, not gonna, they're not gonna be best as far as fueling your body. Um, we'll talk more about you know, the performance in the gym here in a little bit, but ultimately you wanna use the food to fuel your performance, to fuel your body, to fuel your mind, and all that's gonna come down to really eating whole foods, eating proper nutrients. Um, so those are kind of a few reasons on why we want to avoid going down that path of, of excessive bulking and some of the reasons on why maybe that we've, we felt that's what we've needed to do for, for, you know, for as long as we've been, been training. So let's talk about what we need to do in the gym um, to build muscle, lose fat at the same time and end with a lean, aesthetic, shredded physique. First of all, it's gonna come down to your performance, your exercise execution within the gym. If you're training for muscle mass, if you're training for hypertrophy, um, you want to learn to train movements. You want to learn to train muscles. Um, we can talk about strength training. We can talk about power lifting. That's a different approach to, to lifting. But building muscle comes down to how much tension, how much load can you put through that muscle um, with, with under tension, under, under time, under tension. Um, so, so learning proper mechanics, learning muscular function and how to apply load and different variable resistances through the course of your workout. We're going to take you guys through some, uh, some different videos here and explain, you know, how we can use these, these techniques or these principles in training, but really it comes down to setting your goal first. You know, if your goal is building muscle, learn to train for hypertrophy. It's not so much going to be focused on strength, on numbers. Obviously, yes, you want to, you want to lift heavy. You're going to need to learn load. But the first thing you need to do is learn proper mechanics and proper exercise execution. Secondly, um, frequency. Frequency is going to be a big thing. Research has shown that um, training a muscle twice a day or twice a week as opposed to just once a week is going to be more optimal for increasing protein synthesis and creating a better um, hyper, hypertrophic response within that muscle. Um, thirdly, we want conditioning work. Um, that doesn't mean we need to be slaving on a treadmill. That doesn't mean we need to be spending hours walking on a Stairmaster, but we want to create an, a metabolic response within our body. So that can be done first in our training session, so how we're programming our workouts. Um, we want to end every session or incorporate some type of supersets or some type of max output training into our workout. So this is gonna be the use of drop sets. This is gonna be the use of supersets, tri sets, multiple movements that you're doing together to keep your heart rate elevated. Um, rest periods we want in the minute to two minute. You know, we don't wanna do a set and sit down for four minutes and let our body fully recover. We wanna maintain, like I said, a metabolic environment within our body. And then when our conditioning work comes into play, we wanna think HIT style training, HIT high intensity intervals. So these are gonna be maximum effort, maximum efficiency uh, working periods with minimal rest. So think of doing prowler pushes, think of getting maybe on a spin bike and doing a 20 second, 30 second all out sprint. And when I say all out, that means at the end of the 30 seconds, you don't have anything left. Um, tire flips can be great here. That's one of the great things about coming here to the compound is these guys had this gym set up with everything you need. Um, there's incredible machines, there's free weights, but at the same time, they got tires, they got grass. Um, they'll have us running around the building. Um, these are the type of things that you want to do. How much work can you get done in the most efficient, shortest period of time? That's what's gonna help you maintain that lean, shredded physique. And the next thing you wanna think about is, we talked a little bit earlier about this before, is the fueling of, of your body. Obviously, we know that protein and carbohydrates are gonna be necessary for building muscle, but the timing and consuming of those um, is gonna be crucial. So I'm a big advocate of intra-workout uh, nutrition. I think that um, carbohydrates during your training are crucial for recovery. They're crucial for training intensity. Um, and then BCAAs as well. So this is gonna ignite a little bit of protein synthesis while you're training. This is the point where you're literally starting to break down your body. So the sooner you can start repairing that, 
the better that you're gonna recover, allowing you to maintain that frequency of training that you need to build optimal muscle. So carbohydrates, like I said, during training, and then within an hour or so post-training. This is where you really wanna kinda of start replenishing and refueling that body. So a big carbohydrate meal consisting of potatoes, um, white rice, oatmeal, something that's gonna make you feel full, make you feel satisfied, but at the same time, start re uh, re restoring and refilling those glycogen stores. At the same time, in that meal, we want to have uh, protein as well. So lean protein sources, chicken breast, turkey breast, white fish. Um, you know, if you want to just get a quick shake in, that's going to be completely fine as well. Um, and then for the remainder of your meals throughout the day, you want, you want your body burning fat. So we don't want to consume a lot of carbohydrates, not around the times that we're training. We want to obviously keep our protein levels at about a 0.8 to, to one gram per pound. So break that out through the course of your meals. But your meals that aren't after your training, you want healthier fats. You want things that are gonna keep your body burning fat as its fuel. Let's use those carbs during our training and after our training to build the muscle. And then our energy sources, our energy stores throughout the day are gonna be used as, as fat. So taking in healthy fats, avocados, coconut oil is great. Coconut oil is incredible as a pre-workout. Um, fuel source. So it helps with cognitive function. It's going to help you get a better neurological response within your muscles during training. So I highly recommend having a red meat, lean red meat, about 90% or less uh, lean beef and coconut oil pre-training. That's going to be the greatest um, meal that you can have for energy, for cognitive function, like I said, and really help you get in the mindset and approach that you need to be training. The next best time that you wanna be consuming carbohydrates though is gonna be the meal right before you go to bed. Um, so another myth that's probably been in the industry for a really, really long time is don't eat carbohydrates after seven o'clock. Like our body knows that it's seven o'clock and it's gonna start uh, storing carbs as fat. Completely false, completely the worst information that you can possibly have. You want to have carbs before you go to bed. Um, a, it's going to help um, just put you in a relaxed, relaxed state. We know, <laughs> it's funny because we just had Thanksgiving here uh, not too long ago, but we always know that feeling after we eat that big, um, that big meal, Thanksgiving meal. You know, you go sit on the couch, you start watching football, and you end up waking up a half a half hour later, um, not even knowing that your grandma was talking to you about, you know, whatever game she's been playing with her friends, you know, at the clubhouse. But people think that that, that restfulness or that, that, uh, that sleepiness was caused by um, the turkey. Reality, it's, it's the carbohydrates. It's the massive amount of carbs that you consumed um, puts your body in more of a relaxed state. So no better time of the day to, to do that than right before you're going to bed. And as long as you're, calories are within range that you need to be eating and your activity levels are high, it doesn't matter really when you're consuming them, you're not gonna be stored as fat. If anything, you're gonna wake up the next morning with more energy, more focus, more clarity, ready to attack the day. So have a big carb meal right before you go to bed. It's gonna put you in a relaxed state. It's gonna increase uh, serotonin levels, reduce cortisol, which are two things you want to have at, um, at bedtime. You know, you don't wanna go to bed stressful, you want to be, like I said, in a relaxed state of mind. So consuming carbohydrates before you go to bed is going to be crucial in doing that. But really, like I said, it's, it's these key factors, these key principles. So having your exercise execution down, having proper programming and knowing what your goals are when you walk into the gym. I'm here to build muscle. Um, I'm going to get stronger as a result of that, but I'm focused on the exercises that I'm doing. I'm focused on the training and working those muscles under tension and under load, combining that with a little bit of metabolic work. Um, and this will vary from person to person. So use the mirror, use the way that you look as a guide. Somebody that's you know in the 15 to 20% body fat range is obviously gonna have to do a little bit more metabolic work than somebody that's in an eight to 10% range. Um, but ideally, if your goal is building muscle, you wanna try to get to yourself to about a 10 to 12% body fat and kind of stick there. That's gonna where your body's gonna be most optimal. Um, 
for, for building muscle. The hormones are gonna be most optimal um, as far as testosterone levels. So try to get to that 10 to 12% range. If you have to do a little bit of cut to get there first, I would recommend doing that um, because once you get to that point, you're really gonna become an efficient machine at building muscle, at losing body fat, which is our goal, lean aesthetic, mass aesthetic physique. Know that was a lot of information for you there, guys. So go back, rewatch the video, take some notes. But even better, I wanna give you a free gift. Got a free report called The Three Tips for Building Lean Muscle Mass. All you gotta do is hit this arrow right here. The description box is gonna open up. First link you're gonna click on, www.criticalbench.com slash lean mass. Put your email address in and we're gonna send you the report right away. Also, to make it even easier for you, you can just hit this box right here, follow the same steps and the report's gonna be yours. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel right here. Watch this video that we're gonna go a little bit more in detail on some of these topics. And if you really enjoyed this video, we wanna hear from you. So leave us some comments, give us a thumbs up. And we'll talk to you guys soon.